So good morning, and a blessed fifth Sunday of Easter to all of you, and welcome to University Community Presbyterian Church. We seem to be having some difficulty with our slides this morning, so you may need to rely on your bulletin and your pew Bible and your hymnal more than usual. So we'll see if it gets going or, or not. But if you will look at the front of your bulletin, where it says our mission statement. Let us read it together. We invite all to faith in Jesus Christ and growth in discipleship through word, prayer, and service. For any guests that we have today, thank you for being here. You may fill out the yellow card or also fill out the guest book that is in the narthex. And if you fill out the yellow card, you may place it in the offering plate so we have a way to communicate with you in the future. Pastor Erica is away at a Lutheran meeting this week and weekend, so we are blessed to have the Reverend uh, Charlie Brower be preaching with us to, for us today and leading us. Pastor Erica will be back in tomorrow evening so she'll be available Tuesday and resuming regular office hours starting on Wednesday. Uh, UCPC session has agreed to host the Presbytery meeting that will be held in October. There'll be more information about this coming out, but if you're able to help with this at all, uh, please contact a session member and we'll be working on this event. After worship today, there is going to be some pizza and salad and other goodies downstairs, and you are all encouraged to come downstairs as we will be talking. This will be the first of three fellowships where we are going to be talking about who we are, where we're going, things like that, as part of our mission study for our next step in um, calling a new pastor. So we would like everyone to attend. Uh, you didn't need to bring food, it's already there. Are there any other announcements? I noticed that uh, you have some questions in, included in your bulletin this morning. This is our fourth set of questions, and so if you can find time during the service or sometime just after the service, please write a few sentences, you know, one sentence will do, answering each question. Um, <clears throat> we are tabulating these answers and uh, recording them, so when we get to the twelfth question, we will be done, but we're right now on the fourth. Sorry? Where do you put them? Well. <laughs> Okay, so you can put them in the collection plate as you go out, uh, that would do. Uh, or if you forget and <clears throat> you run the, uh, who to give it to, give it to a session member or to me. We will actually uh, put them together. So, and uh, you've already heard the announcement about lunch today. You will notice that uh, there won't be any food out here at the level of the narthex. If you want any food or drink, that's going to be downstairs in the basement. We'll see you down there. I see Carol isn't here today to do the announcement for women's Bible study, but I do see in the bulletin that women's Bible study is tomorrow from 2.30 to 3.30. And I think we're studying a book on Sermon on the Mount. Is that correct? All right. Even if you don't have it, please come. And we, there are extra copies, and you can join in the fellowship and study. So please join me in the call to worship and stand if you are comfortable. We gather this day in joy and Christian fellowship. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be among us. Christ.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise. That amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning, our hymn of praise, Because You Live, O Christ, it's in glory to God, number 249. <laughs> Before God, we remember and proclaim who God is, merciful, just, holy, and loving. We must also remember who we are, and we are a people who have not always been the people God has called us to be. We have not always been merciful, just, holy, or loving. So let us confess our sin trusting in God's goodness to forgive us and create us anew for our lives ahead, beginning with a time of silent confession. Gracious God, 
our hearts out of this as we don't find their home in you. Forgive our pursuit of things that separate us from you. We pursue success, realizing it will never be enough. We desire more possessions, knowing they are empty. We turn toward the world and hope we will find peace, knowing the world cannot provide us. Forgive us, we pray, and may our wandering hearts find their rest in you alone. Here is the good news. In Christ, we are new creations. The old life is gone. Thank God. A new life has begun. Know you are forgiven. And be at peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Gracious God, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds to your words of love and grace this day. Amen. My first reading today is from the Gospel of John. It's page 109 in the New Testament section of your Bible. John 15, 1 through 8. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. My next reading is Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31. 
and it can be found on page 501 in the Old Testament section of your Bible. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay for the, those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. My third reading this morning is again from the Old Testament section, page 241. 1 John, chapter 4, 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God had for us, has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God. And God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do, have, do not have love, a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So, young Come on up, How are you today? Okay. I'm going to teach you 
a sign. It's actually a word in sign language. Can you look at me a minute? Do you know what that means? What does it mean? It means love, doesn't it? Okay, here's another sign. I hold my hand like this, and I kind of put it down in front of my face like this. This means God. God loves me. Can you do that? Let's do it together. God loves me. Point to yourself. Me. Okay. So what I just finished reading talks about God is love. And how we love. We love people, don't we? And we are loved by people. Your mom and your Anna back there, right? They love you, don't they? God loves you. Did you know that? God loves you. Okay. And we can love other people. We can leave. You can love your family, your friends, and other people around you. Because God is love. And God lives in us. The fancy word for that we heard this morning was abide. But that's a pretty fancy word for you. So we're going to talk about it, him living in you. God lives in you. Because he is love. God is love. And that's really the message I want you to know is that God is love. And we can love others because God is in us. And he teaches us to love other people. So God is love. And he who, there's that fancy word, I'm going to say it, abides in love, abides in God, and God in him. Can we pray? Dear God, we thank you so much for your love, the love that you have given us so that we can love other people around us and other people around us can love us. And all the things that you have taught us and that you brought your son to show us ways that we can love all the people around us. Amen. I read from the New King James Version. Acts 8, verses 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south, along the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet, when the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him, and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I? Unless someone guides me. And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. As a lamb before its share is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And, he, and who will deliver his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the Enoch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth. And began at, beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, 
here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the Enoch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the Enoch saw him no more. And he went on his way, rejoicing. But Philip was found as Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities until he came to Caesarea. The word of God for the people of God. Whenever a John or Jane Doe goes missing, most Alaskans have a good sense of what search and rescue, search and rescue operations consist of. But do we know God's search and rescue mission? To participate, we are to submit to the Holy Spirit the direction he will give us, share the gospel to seekers, and seek to be more fruitful for Jesus. That's God's search and rescue operation. At the start of our worship this morning, we read our mission statement. We invite all to faith in Jesus Christ and growth in discipleship through word, prayer, and service. This morning, I hope to explore the growth aspect of our mission statement. It is God's will that we become fruitful. Jesus said in John 15, verse 8, By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. If we consider the context, the word fruit probably refers to the, word, to the word love. In verse 13, it says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. I like how the message translates that verse. It says this, This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. Would we put our lives on the line by joining God's search and rescue operation? Our scripture is about the life of one who did join God's search and rescue operation. Listen about the background for our scripture. Philip was one of the original seven deacons or workers of the early church. Persecution broke out due to stoning of Stephen. As they scattered to avoid persecution, Philip, as well as the rest of the believers, preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to, this, to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. Because of Philip's preaching, many Samarians became believers. The apostle Peter and John visited Philip's work in Samaria. And when they had testified and proclaimed the word of the Lord, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem. One day, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Remember, Philip had gone north from Jerusalem to Samaria. Now the Lord wants them to go south along the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. From Samaria to that desert is about 50 miles. That is even longer than his travels from Jerusalem to Samaria. Philip could have told the Lord that Peter and John were already in Jerusalem. Philip could have reasoned that God could save time and money by sending them instead of him. 
yet Philip obeyed. And on his way, he met an Enoch, an Ethiopian Enoch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot. Note that the Spirit spoke to Philip and he obeyed. To join God's search and rescue operation, we too must submit to the Spirit's direction. Oz Hillman, in one of his devotionals in Today God is First website, wrote, God's way of determining where we invest our time and energy often has little to do with results. It is not by the success or failure of the event we are involved in. Our plumb line for determining success can only be one thing, obedience to the direction of the Holy Spirit. Obedience to the direction of the Holy Spirit. Let me backtrack a bit. When the apostles decided to delegate the deacons the work of feeding the widows, they gave this criterion to the church. Brothers, do seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. This, propose, this proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Philip. The fact that Philip was amongst those chosen by the whole group speaks a lot about him. He was full of the Spirit. I suspect that Philip was very obedient to God. Wherever the Spirit led, he followed. Whatever the Spirit asked, he obeyed. The question for us this morning, I think, is, are we obedient believers? This morning, some of us may be asking, how do we know what the Spirit wants? The Word of God says, make disciples of all nations. That brings me to our, my next question. To join God's search and rescue operation, we must share the gospel to seekers. Our mission statement says, we invite. I ask, is merely inviting enough. Philip obeyed the promptings of the Spirit, and he ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, the eunuch said, unless someone explains it to me? So I invited Philip to come up and sit with the Bible describes the Enoch as an important government official, the chief treasurer for Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The Enoch was a Gentile. He was not a Jew, yet he believed in God. The Bible says he just came from a worship service in Jerusalem. He really sought God, and Philip saw him reading the Old Testament. However, as he admitted to Philip, he did not understand what he was reading. In short, not only was he very successful, but he was also a very sincere seeker of the ways of God. I can relate to this Ethiopian. I think he represents many of us today who are religious, read the scriptures, and seek the truth. Yet, we do not have saving faith in Jesus Christ. We may be sincere, but we are probably lost in showing people the way to Christ. We need someone to show us the way. We need a Philip. The Enoch was reading from Enoch. 
excuse me, that Enoch was reading from Isaiah 53, which prophesied the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. That is the gospel. The good news about Jesus. Remember, the Enoch just came from Jerusalem where he must have heard about Jesus. He had a lot of questions. God at the right time sent Philip to share the gospel with him. What about us? Would we obey the Lord by sharing the gospel with others? People need our Lord. They are probably looking for him. Just imagine. God told Philip to leave a very successful ministry in Samaria where many people accepted the Lord. Philip left to share the gospel with one person, the Enoch. That one soul is very precious to God. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Even the whole world is not, not to pay for a soul. Our Lord Jesus died to rescue us from our sins. That is how precious we are to God. After baptizing the Enoch, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the Enoch did not see him again, but went on his way, rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Again, the Spirit led Philip to his next assignment. God brought him about 50, 30 miles away from Gaza. Then he traveled another 30 miles or so from where the Spirit had brought him. He went from town to town, all the way to Caesarea, telling people about Jesus. He faithfully shared the gospel from one place to another. From here, the book of Acts leaves Philip. 20 years or 13 chapters later, we read that Philip, or excuse me, we read that Paul visited Philip. Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. No doubt, we're talking about the same person and not just a namesake for whom he was described as being Caesarea, but one of the seven. The first original seven people who became the first deacons of the church. But now notice he was now called the evangelist. There are times we feel threatened with big ministries for God. It's too much for us. But all of those whom God mightily used started small. In Philip's case, one Enoch. Luke 16, verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Philip was faithful in little. So God trusted him with much. We do not have to start sharing the gospel with others. We can begin this by inviting people to a church. Join us here in worship. Then we could train, get trained to be evangelists. That's to join God's search and rescue operation. We must seek to be more faithful to God. Folks, would we obey the Spirit by sharing the gospel one person at a time? Are we God's search and rescue operation? Or are we an exclusive club? Brothers and sisters, we are called to multiply. Amen. Our hymn of affirmation is on 
page 231, Christ has risen while the earth slumbers. <laughs> God, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Having heard the good news and being assured of God's love and grace, our response is one of gratitude. Let us give thanks with what we have and who we are. Let us give our offering. If you haven't already done so, you can put the missions in the um, offering plate back there. Is, now is the time to do that. So for your offering, the offering plates are in the back of the sanctuary. You can put it in now or at the end of the service.
Please accept these gifts and use them for the coming of your kingdom in this time and place. In gratitude for all we have and for your love for us, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. the joys and concerns already lifted up. Joys for the perennial flowers coming up. Friendships and family. For elders, deacons, pastors, and all the congregation. Some of the concerns, concerns mental illness, veterans, for the lonely and alone, the plane crash and all involved. Friends going through a nasty divorce with five children involved. What are the prayers, joys, and concerns need to be lifted up today? I'd like to express joy for my school's last music concert, which is happening tomorrow. Continued prayers for Ukraine, Syria, Israel, Gaza, all the troubled spots in the world. Grateful I saw my first robin for the spring this morning. I didn't hear it, but I, I saw it. Thus being a time of prayer. Gracious God, you have promised to hear us as we pray to you. We desperately need your guidance and care. We are a people who often walk around with a long list of concerns and worries on our minds. What a gift it is to come and offer them to you. For you are the author of all grace and goodness. We worry about the state of the world. More people die in Gaza, Ukraine, and other tumultuous places in the world than we grieve at all. We pray for your peace to come to every war zone in the world and for leaders to be filled with a spirit of reconciliation and care. We worry about the state of our nation in the run-up to the presidential election. It seems that divisiveness still reigns and that our very democracy is threatened. Remind us, Lord, of the greater good. May we focus not so much on ourselves, but on what we can do as a nation for those who need help the most. Let us live into our highest ideals, and may we be agents of unity in a difficult time. We worry about our communities. May your hand be in all of our decisions as a community, so that we can be a light unto the world. We worry about those who are sick and suffering. It is difficult to witness illness. And we give you thanks for all the doctors and medical workers who live into their calling with grace and care. Help us each to offer a kind word and a helping hand when we are able. May your spirit be with all who suffer, giving them each a peace that passes all understanding. We worry about our families. 
We pray for your blessing on big families, small families, blood families, and families of choice. We pray for our church family. May the bonds of loyalty and love that unite us with others be strengthened. And may we share love with all. We lift these specific prayers to you today, O oh God, for the joys and concerns voiced this morning. We pray for mental illness. We pray for veterans. We pray for the lonely and lonely. We pray for those involved in the plane crash. We pray for our friends going through a nasty divorce. We're thankful for the flowers coming up. We're thankful for the friendships in our family. We're joyfully thankful for the elders, the deacons, the pastors, and all the congregation. You heard also other voices this morning, dear God, concerns in school, concerns across our nation, the world. May your love be like a seed taking root and growing strong. God, you heard each of our cares and our joys. We ask for your blessing, your grace, and your healing for each of us. Lord, all that we know of goodness and love is found in the person of Jesus Christ. So we now join our voices together in the prayer that he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our hymn of commitment is on page 300. We are one in the spirit.
beloved siblings in Christ, may the love of the Holy Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit abide with you forever. Amen. Now go forth in Jesus' name, remembering his new commandment to love one another just as he has loved us. We will. We will. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I close the response. graciously, love greatly, and leave the rest to God.